More and more startups are building on the blockchain platform, which many believe will disrupt industries. Michael Simeon, CEO of Vopay, joins us on the show to discuss how technology can transform the financial services industry and enable more Nigerians enjoy digital banking services. Blockchain, uh, take us through the whole blockchain industry. Wow, blockchain industry, I think, is the latest uh, thing to happen um, in terms of technology. Um, well, it simply means uh, open ledger. Um, some describe it as a a, a trusted version of truth. Um, it means that if you have a cake, that we all take picture, we all know the DNA of that cake. If you get to that next room, and someone have a cutlet, and trying to verify, we can be able to confirm that that's not the cake that we all have information about. So, in layman terms, that's how to describe um, blockchain. But um, I think we can spend all day if I may have to go into in terms of the technology itself and the impact of it. Okay, it's interesting. Uh, but but in, in Nigeria, it appears that a lot of people equate blockchain to Bitcoin. Um, how can we change this trend? Well, I think that uh, anyone who equate blockchain to, um, to Bitcoin, is, well, I would suggest that it's slightly uh, ignorant uh, because blockchain is the track. Um, Bitcoin is just one of those trains that run on those track. Um, so if it well, seems to be the most popular. Yeah, it seems to. It, well, uh, some people, different school of thought, some argue that um, Bitcoin make blockchain popular, but the, the, the strength of blockchain cannot be underestimated um, because I think, in our own opinion, um, that is what will really change things from the back end. Um, Bitcoin, of course, have its own traction and have its own attractiveness, uh, but blockchain as a technology itself would change a lot of processes uh, as we know today. Um, so Michael, t tell us a bit about your industry. How do you think blockchain can make your industry better? Well, uh, the blockchain foundation itself, when you look at the technology involved, um, is a means of um, transferring digital assets in an uh, efficient, secure, uh, um, swift manner. Now, when you think about our own industry, um, we're fintech, uh, we're payment processing, and the being Vogue now moving into the first blockchain digital banking. It means that we want to leverage um, technology to solve um, the, a lot of African, a lot of transactional problem. And some of the, those assets, it means um, that we'll be able to do it quick, secure, and uh, in a in a in efficient manner, and blockchain will change a lot of that, and it reduce the cost um, that will allow us to uh, to deploy the technology. So you're saying that uh, blockchain would help you become a digital bank? Is that what it means? Yeah, well, yeah. We're the uh, we're the first African um, digital pure plate digital bank, um, first in Africa, and we're proud to hold that banner. But I'm curious, um, how will that operate? Uh, does that mean you have to have a license, or what does it mean? You know, everyone is moving to digital banking now. But um, it's more mobile, mobile banking, Michael. Yeah, What's it's the... different from digital. Okay. Uh, mobile us. banking just allow you to do a few things online and check your balance. But digital banking actually empower what you do. If I may give you an example, if you look at a typical, um, a typical classic of um, bank statement now, your your mobile banking tells you how much you have, how much you don't have. But a digital bank, actually powered by machine learning or AI, will be informing you and interacting. Uh, the interactive um, conversation will be telling you that, look, um, CFA, you can save X amount based on your pattern. It will be monitoring your pattern, monitoring some of the area you spend, some of the content you're buying, and see where you can save money, as well as budgeting for you. So you have a, a, a bank in your own pocket that really empower you to save more money in your, in, in, um, on the long run and in the, in the medium terms. That's a, that's a big difference. Um, the way it is now, we have capabilities even bigger than average banks in Africa. But people need to know how to use these things. It's all well and good if you have these capabilities. If people don't know how to deploy it or how to enjoy these things, um, it may be difficult for them to have the benefit of it.
You're a fintech, and it appears to me that uh, most fintechs today are satisfied with the commission they earn from transfers, from transactions. Uh, don't you think that it's time to disrupt the fintech industry itself? That's exactly what we're trying to do. I think that you don't, don't I mean, if you go and ask anybody, um, fintech business is not get to rich quick um, sector. You know, there's a lot of fluff, you know, little coffee. Um, when you really look at what fintech is, is we're trying to have impactful um, on our society in terms of financial, how people transact, how people, you know, what. If you look at the today's services um, that the, the various banks offer, they, they, they are shackled by a lot of legacy structure. And some of them basically are literally tired. Um, but we have the opportunity. We have young guys. We're refreshed. We have idea. We have technology. There are a lot of stuff that technology can do. Uh, if you come to use VogPay on Digital Bank, you don't need to start filling your names and stuff. The technology pick up your names while you're out from your ID. You know, there are a lot of various things. So, so Michael, uh, there's this issue about security when it comes to blockchain and, and Bitcoin and the rest of them. Uh, what do you have to say about that? Well, I have a lot to say. In fact, um, recently uh, we're working with Interpol um, to, um, to implement um, blockchain to their system. Um, because it, it enables security apparatus to work efficiently and it also help them with um, data forensic um, which is they're very excited we are very excited about it and we will be giving them that capabilities and working with their team um, at the Interpol head and hopefully um, they will, the society at large will see the benefit of that so in terms of security a, a superb I'm, I'm very excited about it so so do you think that blockchain should be regulated? Well, I think that uh, I'm, always, I'm always on the left side when it comes to regulation, although I don't like anarchy. But I feel that the technology you know, is, is the same debate with internet. Should internet be regulated to some extent? But blockchain itself, the process, is a process. It's an online ledger process that once, once you create um, or you hash a block, the, all the information are traceable. If you may apply in Nigeria that if a law is made from the House of Senate, once the bill is gone through, we can, Nigeria can trace whether that money is spent from, from the incession to the to implementation. So in that kind of environment, I feel that it's a powerful tool, you know, open government, government who really wants to get places who wants to get somewhere will really embrace or at least ex explore and see what potential benefit uh, we can we our vote pay we are we are exploring it which is why we moved to digital bank because we feel that the cost of serving Nigerians is too expensive the cost of serving we can't in Africa we can't even transact with each other properly so how can we have a free trade you know initiated by the world trade and stuff but yet, we have an invisible gate in place, which is the payment. We can't transact between ourselves properly. So now imagine a world where we can transact, when Africans can transact within themselves and with outside Africa. That's where work pay comes from. How does government make revenue from all of this? Well, you see, um, the, the fiat of the, because, uh, um, you have accountability and transparency. Government will make revenue. So if I know the CF today, this is, this is you, this is your hash block identity, this is all the money you receive, I'll be able to know how much you should be paying your taxes. Government can, really, can be a real, real win situation, but it needs to be explored. Finally, you are one of the first startups that embrace blockchain, so I must say congratulations. Uh, yeah, but, but what lessons do you have to share with other startups that you have garnered along the process? Well, the lesson I would um, like to share is you have to continue looking for a way to disrupt yourself with technology that fit for purpose. Um, not a technology that will be relevant to our society in Africa, but you need to look at, for a technology that can empower people. You know, I don't chase money. I chase how can I empower you. If I can impact you, money is a side, is a side effect of it. If I want to have, uh, you know, if I want to get tipsy, I don't 
go after a hangover, you have a drink. It's the same thing. You, you just go after, um, after excellency. And I, and I would advise any startup to look for a way how they can adopt some of this technology so we don't, left, uh, we don't get left behind. Thank you for coming on Tech Test Day. Thanks for having me. Thank you. It's important for more Nigerians to understand that Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency for that matter is only a part of blockchain. So the biggest tax before us as a nation is encouraging our entrepreneurs and developers to churn out more innovative solutions using this technology. Thank you for watching the show today. Do follow us on social media and don't forget you can watch these and previous editions of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog cfatech.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukwemeka Agbata. Ow, ow.